Hey guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys how I make my raw apple cider vinegar from scratch. This is an easy recipe and it's very affordable. Honestly, I don't think I will ever go back to store-bought apple cider vinegar again. It's so easy and it's so affordable. A lot of times in the grocery stores or online, you'll get a gallon of apple cider vinegar and for a really good deal, it's normally around seven dollars to ten, seven to ten dollars a gallon whereas this probably more like three dollars a gallon and or less it really just depends so really it's just very affordable and easy to do so i'm excited to share with you guys how to do this let's go ahead and jump right into this video all right so first things first you're going to need apples so you can use any kind of apples um, today I'm using, well, a mixture of Pink Lady and I think Gala because today I'm going to be using scrap apples. What I do with this is I really just, when we eat apples for snacks and stuff, which is a big thing in our house, I take the cores that we don't eat and the peels and anything else that we don't eat of the apple and I put them in a jar. I stick it in the fridge until it's about halfway full and then I know it's ready once it reaches the halfway mark, I know I'm ready to go ahead and start prepping for my apple cider vinegar. Um, so you want about half volume of apples. And what that means is any, whatever, however much you want to make. So if you want to make a size like this, which I'll talk about later, um, then you want to make sure that you get half the volume of apples in that jar to use. And so I'm going to be using this jar to make this other batch of apple cider vinegar. And so I want half the volume of apples. And so that's why I'm ready to make this. Um, and so you can, like I said before, use any kind of apple. Um, these are pink ladies that I have in here. There's also, like I said before, some gala in there, but um, that's what I'll be using. You want to make sure you wash your apples really well. Um, especially if they're not organic uh, because of all the pesticides and apples are on the dirty dozen list so I would say preferably to use organic apples I'm not using organic apples in this recipe but I would say definitely if you can use organic or homegrown apples um, so anyway uh, then you're going to need water um, I use our tap water but that's because we live out in the country and there's no harmful chemicals in our water but if you live in the city where there could be chlorine or any kind of other bacteria or really bad stuff then you filtered water would be preferable the other ingredient is sugar or honey I use raw cane sugar raw pure cane sugar for mine and um, you can use honey I, I've never used honey personally but I know a lot of people who have you can totally do that um, honey does take a lot longer I'd say to ferment with um, but if you're willing to do that and it's not going to bring it's not going to have that sweet taste that you're looking for in apple cider vinegar um, sugar makes makes your apple cider vinegar a little bit more sweeter a little sweeter um, than other vinegars but um, anyway <laughs> so I would definitely recommend using sugar over honey but if you would like to try the honey you totally can um, so yeah anyway and there's a fourth ingredient really that you can use here and it's not necessarily um, you don't have to use this ingredient but I would highly recommend it because it kind of gives your culture a kickstart and so I would make sure you get a very well established apple cider vinegar um, another one to kind of kickstart your brew so you're gonna you're gonna want some apple cider vinegar raw unfiltered with the mother and that'll kickstart your brew it's kind of like a starter culture to kind of just help help it get started so um, so definitely have apple cider vinegar on hand and like I said make sure it's the raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar with the mother and so I got I get mine before I started making it I got mine on Azure standard and um, they have a really good price for their unfiltered organic, or is it organic? It's not, but it's raw with the mother. And they have a really good option for um, their apple cider vinegar. And let's go ahead and get right into the recipe. So a really cool thing about making your own apple cider vinegar is you don't have to have whole apples to make apple cider vinegar with. You can just do scraps like I said I'm gonna be using today. And so that's what's really nice is it's like zero waste. So when you're not wanting to eat the cores of the apples or the seeds or whatever, or you don't know what to do with them, then you can use them to make apple cider vinegar with. And so I really like that that's kind of a way of just like zero waste. 
And so that's a really cool perk to having apple cider, or to making your own apple cider vinegar. You don't have to cut out the cores, you can use the whole apple if you want. Um, you can use, you can cut these up in quarters or whatever, in chunks is what I mean, and just throw them in there and you can use them. Or you can collect, do what I do, and collect scraps over a period of time. I would not recommend going more than a week and a half of of keeping these in the fridge because then they'll start to mold. So just make sure that you also have some air that they can breathe. I don't usually seal them when I put them in the fridge, but anyway, so you can definitely just collect scraps. And then putting a few fresh ones from the day will really help kind of make your culture even better. So anyway, let's go ahead and start this. All right, so you're gonna take your container of choice and fill it halfway full of apples. You can use scrap apples or you can use whole apples chopped into pieces. Either way, it doesn't matter. Then you're going to take warm water and you're going to fill your jar the rest of the way with that water. Make sure you take into account too how much water you're putting into your jar. This way it can help you decide how much sugar to add to your apples later on. Alright, so the next step is going to be adding your sugar to your apples and water mixture. Now, I added five cups of water to my apples, so I'm going to be adding one tablespoon for every one cup of water that I added. So I will be adding five tablespoons of sugar to the apples and water. Alright, so now you're going to add a well-established ACV, or apple cider vinegar, to your mixture. Now, what I like to do is I like to add a good, like, three or four splashes. Um, it's really not a definitive calculation, but just add a little bit, whatever your preference. Uh, don't add too much, but just enough to kind of give your fermented concoction a good kickstart. So. Alright, so now grab a mixing spoon of choice, I'm using a wooden one, and you're going to go ahead and mix all of the ingredients together. Um, just really try and get that sugar at the bottom to dissolve, that's really the purpose of this, and just really mixing all of those ingredients together. It can kind of be hard depending on the container that you're using, like I'm struggling to do as you can see here, but um, just get it to the best you can and keep stirring away until that sugar has been dissolved. Now once you're done with that, you're going to take a clean tea towel that is lint free and you're going to cover the top of your jar with that and secure it with a rubber band. And then you're going to take your jar and you're going to put it in a dark, warm place where there's no sunlight. And you're going to, every day for two weeks, you're going to take it out and you're going to stir it once a day. And this just helps for the apples on the top that are reaching the air to not mold. So make sure you mix it every once a day and you will be good. So after about two weeks, you're going to take your jar and most of the apples, if not all of them, should have sunk to the bottom. This is a sure sign that your brew, your mixture, is done with the two week process. And as you can see, this is my second batch of apple cider vinegar and you can see that all of the apples have sunk to the bottom. So this next step that you're going to be doing is really just straining the apples from the liquid mixture. And really this is a four step process, so we are in step two. Now really all you're doing in step two is just straining the apples from the liquid mixture. And you're going to take a bowl and put a strainer over the top. You can use a mesh, stra a mesh strainer or you can use what I'm using which is just a plastic small strainer. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and strain the liquid from the chunks of apples. Now you can totally feed these apples to your chickens or pigs or use them as compost. Um, I don't have either of those animals as of yet or a compost yet either. So I'm just going to toss them. 
Next, you're going to take a clean jar, or if you're like me, you can use the jar you're already using and clean it really well. Then you're going to take a colander and you're going to put that in the top and you're going to pour the mixture into it. Um, I would recommend using a ladle. As you can see here, I made a big mess. Not using a ladle, um, but using a ladle to <laughs> pour the mixture in is definitely an easier and much le or a less messier option. Now once you've finished pouring the liquid into the jar, you're going to put a clean lint-free tea towel on top and secure it with a rubber band. And this is really the part of the waiting game. You're going to go ahead and you're going to put it in a dark, cool, well, a dark warm area without any light. And you're going to leave it there for one to two months. This also depends on the temperature of your, the room it's in and so will definitely vary but just taste it after a month and see if it's what you're looking for. If it's too vinegary it's probably done. If it's not vinegary enough for you then I would wait a week, taste it again and see if it's changed. So you're just gonna leave it there for one to two months and that is it to step three. Also something to take note is after a while you will start to see a white film that will accumulate on the top of your liquid and that is totally normal. It's just it's just normal. <laughs> um, it's a mother of sorts if you really want to think about it. Kind of like a kombucha scoby. And so um, you can totally remove it once you do the last process of the bottling. So it's totally normal and you can remove it later. Now after about a month or two of sitting in a dark warm area, your apple cider vinegar is going to be ready. Now this also really just depends on how cold your house is, how cold the spot the uh, apple cider vinegar is sitting. And for me it took about a month, month and a half. Um, it really just depends. In the summertime it's probably only going to take me about a month exactly. Um, and so after that period of time you will have your fully all done mixture of apple cider vinegar. It will be done. That will be the last step. Um, technically there's one more step, but it's just taking that mixture that's done. And what I would recommend doing to kind of figure out if it's done or not is try tasting it. And if it's too vinegary for you, um, then it's probably done. <laughs> but um, if it's not quite as vinegary as you would like apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar to be for you, then you can let it sit for a bit longer and just let, let it sit, sit for a week more and just see what happens um, and just taste it once a week and so until you get your taste, the taste you want. And so that's kind of what I did. It took about a month, a month and a half and I tasted it a couple times and it came out to be an amazing apple cider vinegar taste and it tastes so much better than store-bought and I really enjoy it and um, but the last official step is just bottling it and so after it's sat and after you've you know confirmed that this is what this is the taste you want then you go ahead and you can take that out and I just bottled our first batch and I put it in this old um, re I reused an old vinegar bottle um, apple cider vinegar bottle actually and I put it in here and so I just bottled it and put it in the pantry and that's it that's now I use it for just regular apple cider vinegar uses and it's awesome it tastes so good uh, the one thing to kind of note here is that it will continue to ferment <laughs> um, so when you put it in the pantry it's just gonna continue to ferment faster um, if you put it in the refrigerator it, it'll ferment slower. So a lot of people like their uh, apple cider vinegar in the fridge. They like it refrigerated. You do not have to do that with apple cider vinegar. Um, really what it'll just continue to do is ferment. But um, And it will continue to ferment in the fridge. It'll just take a lot less or it'll take a lot longer to ferment more. Um, whereas in a more room temperature, warmer uh, climate, it's going to um, it's, it's going to ferment faster. So anyway, and it's going to get stronger in taste, but, um, and definitely a lot stronger in vinegary tasting, tastiness. So anyway, but yeah, that's, that is how you make your apple cider vinegar, um, from scratch with apple scraps or whole apples or whatever you want to do. It's so easy. It takes, you know, in a matter of, it takes like two months total, I guess, a month and a half total of all the steps combined to make it all and that's super easy the hardest part is just waiting and watching 
and that's that really is the hardest part and so it's super easy super affordable I would say this probably cost me all of like maybe a dollar maybe a dollar and a half depending on how expensive the apples were but again if you really think about it I only took a quarter of the apple of each apple so it's really like a buck for I think this is 16 ounces uh, you know no I don't know it's probably closer to like a quarter of a gallon or something but um I've got a half gallon almost half a gallon in fermenting of my second batch and so that again probably only like cost me two dollars so for like a gallon like I said it's probably like three and a half dollars so really it's very worth it and apple cider vinegar can last forever and so it just never goes bad so yeah anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions or if you made this recipe I would love to know how it turned out because I'm nosy like that and I would just love to know what how others are using my recipe and how it's working for you so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you guys in my next video bye